All right, Mac, let's get into our big four breakdown. Let's start with uh, the Tigers. Number 21, Clemson beats NC State 59 to 35. The Tigers dominated, especially offensively. And this game was over. It really felt kind of halfway through the first quarter. Maybe just you could say at the end of the first quarter, it's definitely over. The offense looked great for Clemson. And we'll talk about NC State and what they need to do, Mac. What were your overall thoughts from this game? Yeah, well, really, kind of everything you said there. And there's a couple of different things. I am going to put a coach hat on at some point in this discussion before we move on. Are we talking about something that looked a little sus? Sure, yeah. 35 points. 21 yeah. in the fourth quarter. But anyway, positive things first. Positive things first. Uh, Clemson looked fantastic. Speed out of the gate. Uh, Cade Klubnick housing it for 55 yards. Touchdown. Great read. Longest rush from a Clemson quarterback since that Ohio State game where Trevor Lawrence looked like a you know just grazing giraffe on the Sahara. Uh, <laughs> doing his thing out there. If you know, um, you know. I love – yeah, if you know, you know. Uh, loved his decision making. I mean, the the biggest difference to me, KG, where you talk about okay, what is it? What is about it? Obviously, the stats, this and that, is great. Throwing touchdowns, throwing bombs, but the decisiveness to me has been the biggest difference. And there's a couple of things. There's three things with that, in my opinion, on why that's happening. Number one, he's gotten better. He understands it looks like defenses when to go where, uh, trusting his guys, and just again growing up as a quarterback, going from year one to year two. Kind of the things that we talked about we want to see and need to see. The second thing is I think the receivers are better. I think the receivers are getting open. I think the receivers are getting separation. I think the receivers are catching passes uh, at a much better rate than they have in quite some time. And so that's two of it. The third thing is I have been in love with the play calling. I have Mm -hmm. loved what we've seen. The tags, Cade's ability to check if he sees something, uh, and, and just the creativity of it with the route concepts and, and really getting it open. I mean, that that's you know we're we're seeing you know Garrett Riley be in his bag, but you can't reach into the bag unless you're executing, and you can't execute unless you're catching the ball, and you can't catch the ball unless your quarterback's throwing it well. So it literally is this triangle that is all connected, and that's working really well right now. So it's fun to watch and. and you know, you can say whatever you want about NC State. You can say whatever you want about App State. Cade Klubnick had a 99 QBR back-to-back for the first time, I think, ever, is, is what I saw since they've been documented, since they've been recording it. Wild. He's throwing at a crazy rate right now. And, you know, not to, not to sit here and say that's what we expected, right? Number one quarterback in his class. And when we saw him get action, man, I, not quite that. But close. I mean, I, I had those type of expectations. And when we saw the glimpse of the you know, North Carolina game in the ACC championship, you're like, yeah, let's go. Here we go. Buckle up. And, uh, you know, you, you have the year that you did a year ago. But he just looks completely different and, and really fun to watch. The, the offense executing at a superb level. Uh, you know, just, just anything they want, running it, passing it. I think the offensive line has been elite. Uh, those guys have been really fun to watch. And again, I, I thought that in the Georgia game that there was never a time, you know, outside of I know everybody wants to you know make fun of when the guards pulled into each other, which I get it. That was dumb and it looks so silly. But outside of that, I never felt like there was a moment where I'm just like, these guys are getting overpowered or, or yikes, you know, that that's not good looking. Um, and they've carried that and they've transitioned that. So it's a complete attitude shift offensively. And I've been very impressed, you know, what I'm seeing from them. And, uh, I don't think it's slowing down. Yeah. Mac, I think you're exactly right. This offense looks night and day. I I wouldn't have believed you after the Georgia game. If you had told me (laughs) how the next two games would have gone specifically. And and can I tell you one more, one more, even so the, the Georgia game, Ball goes in the air, and you're just like, e- 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 here we go. Yeah. These last two that games, the ball goes in the air, and I'm like, touchdown. <laughs> here it goes. You know, and I think that's kind of the shift that – that's what I used to think. That, that's how I – when we were playing, uh, when when we called certain things, I'm like, yeah, this here comes a shot. You know, here, we're about to score. And then as, as a, a fan and analyst for, you know, that handful of years, you know, before this all started, ball goes in the air. You're expecting a massive, massive play. I also went back to that, you know, kind of mindset with what I've seen as well. Hey, to your point, he looks so much more decisive. He looks so much more confident. It's, and maybe that's a trickle down effect to the wide receivers. 
or maybe it's kind of the other way around. You're not, you really don't know because they're so well connected and they're so connected. Antonio Williams, I thought he looked really good. Kind of a welcome back for him with all the injuries last year. Adam Randall, that was great to see. A little surprising. Wesco got banged up a bit, so we didn't see much of him. Mafa, phenomenal. Mafa's doing his job. Mac, I think you could argue, and maybe I said this on Friday, I don't remember. The Clemson O-line is in the running right now for perhaps the most improved unit sure. in the country. I would say probably in the ACC, you could look at maybe some of Miami yeah. with their offense, but just unbelievable what that O-line has done and what this offense right. has done. You can say what you want about the opponent. I get that NC State has been shellacked now twice by two ranked teams, but you could also argue, Mac, that this Clemson team with these young wide receivers and Cade getting mm -hmm. to know these guys, mm -hmm. they just needed confidence. And it's really hard. Even when you play Georgia close, like Kentucky did, you're not really getting confidence from that yeah. game. You're maybe just right. surviving in that game. So we'll see, of course, how Georgia looks down the rest of the year. Right. But this is what Clemson needed. Whether it means they're great again or not, I'm not sure. But it's definitely what they've needed. And the offense <laughs> looks phenomenal. Yeah, no, they absolutely do. And, and I do want to point out, uh, you, you bring up Adam Randall. Sounds like he had a, a toe injury again. And sounds yeah. like he's going to be out for a while, which yes. is, is oh. so devastating. Mm -hmm. You know, disappointing for a guy that's worked so hard, that had an injury, you know, at the beginning of his career and, and you know, trying to get back as best he could. And then it felt like, okay, this is it. And, you know, to have the game he did, it sounds know. like on an injury, to score his first touchdown and then to get the news, hey, brother, you got it. You have to sit out a little bit more, you know, just prayers up to him and, and hope that, you know, speedy recovery mentally stay locked in. Cause I, I can't believe, I mean, I, I ne luckily enough, never had any injuries in college. So I, I can't, you know, mentally think of what that battle is that you fight so hard to get back and then to fall back into it. Um, so that, that's certainly disappointing. And on the other side of it, you know, other guys get more reps. You know, we're, we're going to see more from TJ more now. We're going to see more from other guys uh, and, and didn't see, you know, Tyler uh, Brown either. You know, he was right. kept out of this game as well. So you know, it's going to be interesting Woods. to just see. Yeah, we're Peter Woods. going to be interesting let's, to see offensively how they keep going. Yeah. Well, let's use that to transition to this defense. And then we're going to talk some NC State too because we don't want to forget about NC State. We don't want to forget about the, the teams in the triangle, even though um, <laughs> they're kind of making us want to forget about them. But no Peter Woods. This defense looked great in the first half. It just, it kind of, it, it was similar, I think, to App, you know, where the depth, maybe, okay, instead of saying the defense is sus, Mac, I'm going to say the depth is a little sus because overall, yeah. your first string has looked pretty good in these last two yeah. games. And then you also have some young guys like Sammy Brown was your leading tackler in this game, which I think is a really two good weeks sign. In a row. You held two Concepcion, weeks in a row. yeah, two weeks in a row. You held Concepcion to five catches for 40 yards, which was, the key in this game, but ending up giving up 35, even though I know a lot of the younger guys were out there, still not ideal at the end yeah. of the game. Mac. No, it's, it's definitely not. And, and 21 being in the fourth quarter is like sickening, like makes me yeah. want to bomb to zero when I was watching it. Yeah. It, it, it is hilarious because we're sitting there, you know, we're watching all these games and uh, you know, <laughs> they just keep scoring and I'm like getting pissed in the green room and everyone's like making fun of me. They're like, dude, you're winning by 30 points. Like what's happening. I'm like, yeah, but do you see this? Come on. You know, just a little bit of a lack of execution. Um, you know, to have a team rush for, for nearly 180 yards on you. And a lot of that, not a lot of it. Most of it was in the second half. Uh, NC state averaged like one yard, a rush in the first half. It got up to nine in the second half. Like that's, that's, it's a big deal. That's it's not great. And so again, that depth. Glad you're getting reps because obviously you need it, and that's important. And I needed it too when I was a young player. Um, you know, it's one of those things. But you just want to see guys taking more advantage. You know, of those opportunities, executing at a higher level. Um, yeah, you shouldn't be scored 35 points on that. That's that's a lot. That's a lot, especially when you do get your chance. But there were some bright spots, as you mentioned. Sammy Brown, I think, has looked like a baller. I think he's mm -hmm. ready right now to, to, to take more on his plate in meaningful, you know, type of games. Obviously these last two, he's had an abundance of opportunity and, and coach Sweeney has echoed, you know, very excited about what he's been able to do. Had four tackles for loss yeah. against NC state. Ridiculous. That's crazy. 
from the linebacker position. That guy is very fast, triggers in a hurry. Think his best ball way in front of him. To have a pick six, you know, a young cat, being able to do that uh, was was fun to watch that as well. And then, you know, having the, uh, you know, TJ Parker kind of coming back party uh, where he's getting in the backfield, has two sacks, forced fumble. I mean, broke that dude. You and I both talked about that. Look out. Here they come. Um, and that's exactly what we saw from them. So certainly bright spots, but it just feels like to me, KG, we've seen three 30-minute intervals yeah. of the Clemson defense. Yeah. I would like to see three 60-minute intervals of that defense. Um, but, hey, growing pains, you figure it out. A lot of new faces, a lot of young guys, and especially with injuries, younger guys have to play as well. Um, and I think some of that you, you obviously have to give credit to NC State. Number one, not quitting. And number two, I think I think C.J. Bailey is good. I think he's yes, going to be okay. really good. So let's get to that because NC State, I hate to rope Carolina in with UNC State. My apologies, <laughs> but that's just kind of where I'm thinking right now. Obviously, the first half was really rough. But C.J. Bailey, to me, has a lot of potential. I think you yeah. that was a lion's den situation, right? Concepcion, maybe not healthy. Um, you're playing at Death Valley. Clemson's just super motivated, and this is C.J. Bailey's first mm-hmm. start. But I like him a lot. I think this could be a guy – he might have to take some lumps this year, especially because right. it feels like the O-line and some of the skilled players aren't performing like we thought. But I think he could be he could be a really good player for NC State. Yeah, no, 100%. And and really, even from the first snap you know that, that he took after Clemson obviously drives down the field and, and looks great um, you know, in a hurry – I was like, okay, I like this. Yeah. I like what it looks like. And now that was only, you know, two or three plays, and then it led to a punt. But the first play where they, you know, roll him out, he gets a nice, easy pass. I mean, it literally was the first play Clemson ran against Georgia, and they just connected on it for a 15-yard completion or a game, you know, and and I love that. And saw, you know, okay, first first down is important. You know, let's see where they go from here. And then, of course, the punt. But liked his decision-making overall. Um, I thought there were a, a couple of times where you did see the freshman – like it, it was almost like predetermined he was going to pull the ball and it was clearly a give. Like you got to hand it to your guy when, when you're looking at a certain thing that ended up being a tackle for loss or a big play, uh, things of that nature, but fitting the ball in space, there were a couple of, you know, I thought we're going to be picks, uh, but they just seated right in the middle of guys floated one right over uh, uh, Khalil Barnes's head for a big completion. So there, there was certainly flashes. I, I think, it's a weird thing because I, I am so future thinking, but also don't want to waste right now. Yeah. I would love if he could just kind of wait a little bit, if he could just go back to sitting and grow okay. and play when you can. Cause I don't want to break him. I, quarterback's different. I don't want to break him. Right. I don't want to ruin him for the next three, maybe four years just to get, get what seven, seven wins now. Like it, it, you do have to, you do have to go back and forth on that. I get that. I think that's why the coaches get paid what they get paid, right? But you that's think right. about – like there are some examples <laughs> in this league that you think about, like DeAndre Francois, right, and, and the yeah. injuries he had. Yeah. But I feel like for NC State, this is weird because you lost MJ Morris because you went back to a vet. And, of course, <laughs> yeah. he yeah. didn't even win the starting job at Maryland. But it's a weird situation for NC State to it navigate is. right now. I would it not – It feels like we're doing it all over again. It feels like yeah. the same situation. I would not want to be making those decisions. No way. I know. It is hard. hard. I think there's a lot of that. I think there's a maturity piece of it. Like I want to see him grow. You know, I I want him to be 15 pounds heavier. Um, And just again, just like the NFL, more so here, you see it with Arch Manning at Texas. That family ain't screaming and complaining, saying he needs to start. Even when there's an injury, they're saying, Mm -hmm. we're going to be patient. We're going to develop our guy. We want him to be the final best product he can be before he goes to the NFL. And I don't think that necessarily means playing when you're 18 years old and don't really know what you don't know. Such a good example. I know that the Mannings are a little different because they don't need the money. They don't need (laughs) to rush. But it is a really good example of being a little more patient. Mac, what I was going to say about the NC State defense was was nothing. I really (laughs) – the the NC State defense and the UNC defense defenses are just this NC State defense has taken such a step back and it's it's tough because they were so good last year but they lost so many pieces and we've heard about that all year and I just thought they'd bounce back a little more than this Mac 
I, I just, I thought they would, but we have not yeah. seen that. No, we, we really haven't. And, you know, it, it was kind of funny to me, the people that were on Twitter, the people that were saying after App State got whipped and taken to the woodshed, oh, maybe there's not much you can take from that game. I think there was. I think there was a little bit you could have taken. And uh, we'll see. Like I said, I think Clemson is 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 well on their way to being where they used to, overpowering opponents in a hurry. And uh, when you're, it, it's all about quarterback. I've said that for two years, more than that. And I've said that about every team. You look at Miami, which we're about to talk about next. They get a QB, everything's rolling. Everything changes. When you have a guy that can make plays and that can be a superstar, it's all different. It's all different. I totally agree. I do think, and this is maybe a conversation for a different pod, but I think Clemson's playing great <laughs> football. I think this could yeah. be a team that could make some noise in the postseason, but you have to win out. I'm not sure, sure you can lose another game and make the playoff, but we'll get to that. 